Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe, and you're checking out Weekend at Gabe's, and thanks for checking out this latest episode. While you're here, also follow us on these social medias at Weekend Gabe, at Weekend at Gabe's, and also at The Real Sam Crane. Thanks for checking us out. All right, we're going to reset. Uh, you're checking out Weekend at Gabe's, Weekend Gabe's. Thanks for checking us out on Twitch, The Real Sam Crane, my producer-in-chief, and also from way up north. I'm just going to keep saying way up north because you're- <laughs> I'm not even that far north. That's what's crazy about your whole scenario. You make it seem like I'm I live in Wrigleyville, like I live inside the stadium. Oh no, no, no. You're 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 right on the Wisconsin, Illinois uh, borderline. That's how, <laughs> That's how far north I am. Yeah. Uh so we're gonna uh hopefully we'll get uh old school ice green joining us. Uh, but I don't want to hold up her time anymore. But the this rapping duo has been around for nearly 20 something years. I'm pretty sure she's gonna correct me on the time frame. But they've been uh, going at it, recording independently, mixtapes. They're right on the verge of of a commercial release, and then a disastrous uh, financial uh, issue just completely collapsed the rollout of the record. And they've just been uh, sitting on the sidelines waiting for their new opportunity. And it comes in the blessing of a Kanye West uh, text and a phone call. And guess what? They're back at it. And joining us tonight is EP the Hellcat, uh, one half of Abstract Mind State. Uh, how are you? Good evening. What's happening? What's happening? Man, listen, I was, you know, of course, I was listening to the commentary um, about the brother Squeak. And um, man, thank you guys for providing a platform like that to be heard because that's a, that, a lot of times that's what's missing like you know what i mean we, you have grieving families and things of that nature but a lot of times those those uh voices you know they're not loud enough you know what i mean so any outlet that I, you know especially something like this that you guys that provide um it's it's just it's just helpful it's helpful and um it means a lot it means a lot so, so I, I commend I commend you both for uh, you know providing an avenue and an outlet for for you know just to let people know that we know what's going on that you guys know what's going on and everybody wants to solve it you know it, it's um one of those deals where you know it's a world community you know I'm in Chicago I grew up in Austin I grew up right down the street from Belmont Craigan you know and I grew up in Austin and I'm 49 years old so you know what I didn't saw yeah you know? so yeah. so you know what I mean in old school grew up in Inglewoods right and he's 49 so think about the things that he's seen so um like it it's uh it's it's this it's the same thing you know uh Chicago is full of just politics man and nothing ever gets done and you know, people are leaving the city by the masses, you know, and, and um, that's just, it's sad because it's a beautiful city and, yeah. and, and it's beautiful people here. And we have a lot to offer the world, not just each other. And to see people leaving in droves and picking up and moving because of the violence, it's a sad state. Absolutely. It's a sad state. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's true. But uh, thank you uh, for your for your kind words. And uh, you know, we this isn't unfortunately this isn't the first time we use this platform to address the violence. In the city. Um, and I'm pretty sure it won't be the last time. Um, but uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I, I'm aware that yeah, you you grew up not that far from uh, Hale Elementary, which is like a short drive away from my home. So uh, um, well, I grew I grew up across the street from Hay. <laughs> I grew up on the corner 955 Laramie. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are gonna try to rope in uh old school ice cream if he's with I'm us. actually I'm actually um I'm actually sending him the link again. Oh, there he is. There he is. You got him. Hey, okay. we got them both. We got them both, Gabe. We got <laughs> this. <laughs> what up, man? Oh man, I just was going through some stuff. No, you're all good. Listen, oh my god, it's so good to see Greg. I haven't seen you in so long, so I appreciate it. <laughs> What's that. up, bro? What's good with it? Good, good. Uh <clears throat> we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get to all uh, some other things that we've been a part of, but uh I I've, I've been talking to Greg for almost 10 years now since I got into this following his career. Yeah, man. So it's so it's so crazy to see it come full circle. So I'm I'm really excited <laughs> to tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty dope. Uh but uh we have 
have the group Abstract Mind State, they have the new record, I'll Dream Still in Fire on the newly formed Yeezy Sound. Congratulations, thank first you. off, everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The record's been out a couple weeks. I just really want to uh, briefly just sort of get your um, what that means, considering that for, for those who are just joining us, the we were, uh, we we're mentioning that it's uh, widely known that you guys had a commercial release around 2004, 2005. It was ready to come out. You guys had a Kanye West feature, John Legend, Common, heavy hitters, big names. Oh, yeah. oh, you yeah. guys right on the cusp yeah. of releasing this commercial release that would have yeah. given you guys the, the footing to go on tour, to be in videos, to get the, the much needed attention the, that, that sparked yes. a group like yours. The financial backing of that project falls through. You guys end up on the mixtape circuit this, and then break up. And now, 15 years later, you guys have this renewed spirit. So, all 16. that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I only did. Yeah, we all, only did all these dates. <laughs> yeah, we all, only did that out of fun because, man, people have been saying 20 years, 13, 10, 16 years. <laughs> I, I'm, the, I'm just, it was a joke between us because we, we've been playing around, but it actually has been 16. But everybody been saying so many different de- uh, years that we just kind of joke with it now. <laughs> what, what was uh, so? So now the record is out. That Hallelujah moment is out. You guys got it. You guys got the moment you've been always striving for. Two weeks the record's been out. What is what is that that yeah, euphoria? Yeah. What does that feeling feel like? You know what? Actually, Greg and I, old school, and I were talking about that. Uh, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, we our comment was. Like right now, it does. It feels no different. Like yeah. it feels because we've been here before. Yeah, we've yeah, been yeah. right here before. You know, so it's it's not it's not any different. We 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 waiting for the other shoes to drop. <laughs> yeah. So so it's like it's more to come. So not to sound ungrateful at all, we're extremely grateful. But what it is is we know it's more to come and. It's the more to come that we're looking forward to because yeah. we've actually been right here before. Now, of course, it's on a much larger right. scale, a higher magnitude. It's a lot more hype. It's a whole thing behind it. But here's the thing. EP and I was never really into like hype and big and magnitude. We was always about the art. So right. the feeling is exactly the same. So mm-hmm. we felt this feeling of like, oh, uh, Cause you know she, uh, she and I, if we put out a twelve inch, we partied and 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 had you know we had whole celebrations, we had whole release parties over, over for twelve inches, yeah. something that nobody on the planet was doing. So right. we celebrated every moment. So right now, although it's extremely celebratory, we're extremely grateful. I know I'm speaking for both of us. We're we're both very happy, but it's just it's just uh, the things that come, you know, with after all of this is what yeah. It's probably what you're going to see. Yeah, that's that's what we're anticipating. anticipating. I'm hearing a little, uh, I think it's a famous Barry Sanders quote that, you know, when you get in the end zone, act like you've been there before, hand the ball to the (laughs) ref. Yeah, Yeah. no, exactly, exactly, because we've been, I mean, we literally have been right here before, like, a game, you were just breaking down. I mean, we're, we're, we're the king and queen of false starts. You know what I'm saying? Like we had, so, we 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 they can call us abstract mind state the ride because we've been a roller coaster. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. open us up at Six Flags, baby, because yeah. we've been through so many ups and downs that Absolutely. you know what I mean. <laughs> did, did you guys right. ever feel no, like wait, you're? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you guys ever feel like you're the what if group? Like if we just oh. had, if we just had oh. this, group, like there's there's so many groups I just feel like they they were slighted or they weren't given the look that they probably deserve. And for 16 years, you guys sat with that feeling of like, what if, you know? We, like, have, a, we have a song called "What If," like we, can, yeah. we have, but but yeah. no, we could, we could we are we are the poster children for what ifs. Like, we are definitely we we are we are we are that you 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 hit it right on the head. And it's funny we we literally you know EP is not joking. We literally have a song on Volume Two called "What If," <laughs> like you know uh, of our mixtape Volume Chicago's hardest work of Volume Two, but. You know, I always joked, and we we're definitely the what if group. And I always say, my life is a series of almost. You know, it's just as oh, it almost. It was like we're the close, but no, we the king and queen of close, but no cigar. 
yep. you know. Yep. So it, it's beautiful to be here though, because it, you know, we finally got past the close. Now we actually did it, you know. Yeah, yeah. We we have a we have a full project out worldwide, and you know, back then when we was rocking like that, Gabe, you know, the internet wasn't the thing, you know. The internet right, was yeah. the thing. Now, now we got people hitting us, you know. On a DM from Australia, from Spain, from Argentina. <laughs> wow, I'm talking about I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it. People, yeah. you know, we have we have people quoting our lyrics in Mandarin. Like they yes. in Mandarin. Like I'm like, this is wow. <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty fun. Like it's pretty fun to see this happen. You know, that's that's what's cool. I think me and EP are connecting with the people more than anything. Cause it's yeah. just dope yeah. to you know what I mean? Like the DMs have been going absolutely crazy in our individual and group um, uh, IG, you know, and, and it's like we we having a ball with that because, I mean, we enjoy in touching the people, man, because, you know, if, if you go back to the beginning of the abstract, that's all we ever did it for was to touch the people. Yeah. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? We That's why we worked so hard on our live show. It was all it was everything. It was very unselfish for us. It was just like we about to. You know what I'm saying? Do something good for hip hop. That's what we we were the Wonder Twins. We were superheroes. You know. <laughs> and, and, and and now fast forward, it's the same. We the same ideals, the same yeah. purpose behind yeah. it. You know, yep. reach, reaching people, um, giving people a little different bounce. You know what I yeah, mean? Right. A, a renewed spirit of, of, of what hip hop was founded on. Mm. So, yeah. so it's yeah, it's like man. our mission hasn't changed. Right. I, I wanna. Not at all. Yeah, I want to wind the clocks all the way back to the beginning, but we'll get there in a little bit because uh, I'm glad you brought that up. You guys are doing something a little different, and I saw it uh, in the interview uh, presented as adult contemporary hip hop. Yeah. Ah, yes. That's yeah. that's a that's a brand that we that we're embracing yeah. and a, a concept or something. It's actually something I, I coined like twenty some years ago. I just didn't have a platform to be heard. Right. Talking about adult contemporary hip hop. So now. We have a platform and this 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 uniquely blessed situation that we're in uh is allowing us to speak and, and put this adult contemporary hip hop uh stamp uh genre that I'm working on making it a legitimate genre. I'm in the that's in the process now. Um we're embracing that thing, man. Cause and let me say this adult contemporary adult contemporary hip hop is not old hip hop or right. you know right. old school right. hip hop. It's just the give, alternative. Give them, give them the names, Greg, because I yeah. saw some yeah. names, but I know you got more. Man, uh, uh, Corday is adult contemporary hip hop. Yes, Joey sir. Badass is adult contemporary. Bishop Naru is uh, the adult contemporary, uh, adult contemporary hip hop. Uh, 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 definitely Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole is adult contemporary yeah. hip hop. Abstract um, Rap State. Abstract Rap State. Rap it. Rap it. You know, yeah, Rhapsody is adult contemporary hip hop. Word. It's just that it's just that um that vibe, like Dion Cole said on the on the voicemail interlude on our record. It's just yeah. the vibe. Adult contemporary ACH is a vibe. It's not a it's not an age. It's just a vibe. Yeah, and it allows it allows that other thing to live as well. Like EP and I don't have no. Hey man, they can they can trap it up and mumble it up and, and have have fun. Yeah. But there, but it should be more okay. alternatives, and that's yes. you know, you know, I, we we not here to hate or change uh, or change what they doing. We happy to see the young the young ones make, getting their bread and getting their getting their entrepreneur up right now. We talk about that all the time. It's like really nice to see them make money, but it, in terms of sound, there's some more sounds out here, and, we and, just wanna, and there's some things missing. You know, it's yeah. some things missing. It's some it's some people. Um, in the world that uh, haven't even experienced real hip hop, and it's right. some that have experienced it and they miss it, and, and they, yeah. you know, they want to go back to it. So yeah, yeah. So that vibe. That's all I can say. It's, it's a vibe. So know? from the from the outside looking in, because because Gabe is from y'all generation, but when somebody says <laughs> the <laughs> word, you heard that, didn't you, Gabe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm aware. When somebody says the words to me, adult contemporary hip hop, I know everybody age 16 or higher is like I roll, right? But what what interested me about this record was that it was just that. I'm glad you talked about the vibe because so often I feel like when I hear records or, or I hear people trying to do this, they don't do it right because it ends up being preachy, number one, right. and boring, number two. Right. and 
Y'all got a song on there called Wise Tale, and it's the least preachy record I think I've ever heard in my entire life. So I just I like you who do you credit that to? Is that is that something y'all strive for as far as like not getting into those ruts? Or do you credit that to Ye on the production? Well, I think you it's know our what? personality. I, yeah, that's what I that's what I was about to say. I think I think it's a credit to our personality and whatever, even historically, whatever um, producers we use, like it seemed mm-hmm. like every producer would bring something out different. And yeah. um, and I, I credit I, I credit my Wonder Twin partner with being able to listen to those particular beats from anybody, including a wise mm-hmm. tale, and be able to figure out what needs to be on this particular beat. What what yeah. we need to talk about on this track. That was never my forte. I just like, you know, that was never my thing. You know, I might have came up with a few ideas about, you know what I mean, as far as context and content, you know, um here and there. But for the most part, even with Wise Tail, um, like when he heard the beat, he already knew, you know, what should be spoken about on there. And it was just it was just up to us to create the to create those uh that that context for that work yeah it's like i know i know us we're again we we say this in a lot of interviews we're like the biggest fans of each other like like we have our favorite rappers but our favorite rappers are pretty much each other like she's my she's the best female mc that i ever heard in my life you know and i just so we vibe off of each other so if i like it or or she likes it we already know the other one is going to have nothing else at least feel it because we pretty much cut from the same cloth. So I would credit like the the way we can go at it when we put these songs together. It's basically our personality. She and I have spent so much time together that like I I've said before we drive we we've driven um engineers in the studio absolutely crazy cuz we have so many jokes. And so and they all inside jokes like our entire <laughs> life is one long inside jerk joke, wow. joke because we've been yeah. around each other so long right. and they they don't know what we talking about like I can just throw a word out there and she'll finish it and we'll just start laughing and they be mm-hmm. like man y'all crazy you know but at the same time we get real serious when it's time to to lay the you know the later foundation down or whatever it is we're in there to create so right. You know, it's a, it's all personality, man. You know, it's not about the. And it's the way we, about. it's the way we bounce off each other. Like yeah. it's so natural, and that's one of the things that was so dope about coming back together. Um, so many years later, that yeah. like it, it was like riding a bike. It was yeah, yeah. It was so yeah. natural. It was so natural being sitting at the table writing again, like bouncing yeah. off each other with different phrases and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I'm talking. It was so natural that. Yeah. You know, it was easy. It was easy. Yeah, yeah. It was a question asked of me in the in our documentary, which I hope you guys could uh, eventually see really yes. soon. Um, they asked what what did it felt like to get back in the studio with EP, and the, and my answer was normal. You know, I was like, it felt normal, like because that's yeah. she and I. We are the norm. Like we just know it's a it's normal for us to do because they like man, y'all got back to it. Yeah, well, the abnormal part was the situation coming back to us yeah, like that. Right. Yeah, that was right. abnormal. But but her and I, once it was done and back together, the Wonder Twins, oh, man, that was normal, you right. know? <laughs> was was there a moment because, you know, I kind of feel like, yeah, you guys jumped in back and you guys were comfortable in your, in your space, but also there's such a time lapse in between the last time you guys recorded, and so your skill level – like what was that like being intro- reintroduced to yourselves and seeing either the progression or the lapse and skills to get yourself back up to because i like to know but what i understand is like you know like anything that you're that you work on you have to continue it's like a, a muscle right you gotta keep mm-hmm. working, you gotta yeah. working on it yeah. i know that you know ep you you started you went to school you had a lot of family uh, uh things that you had to attend to and then uh grab- Greg went into the music, then he wasn't really a musician or recording. So like you guys getting back into it, what was that like seeing you guys sort of like in this new space and like almost like looking at looking at each other and trying to figure out like what skills does he still have and what new does that happen? <laughs> yeah, I have to imagine there it's like, what is in your bag of tricks that I haven't seen yet? Hmm. Yeah. 
So for, so for me, it was rough. It, it, it really was. Because <laughs> honestly, guys, I was really far removed from music, period. Right. Like as far as, you know, writing or even really listening to hip hop. Like I wasn't even really listening to rap music like that. Um, like life, life was happening. So that wasn't even a thing that I was entertaining at the time. And it took a while for me to start back getting into writing because of stuff that was going on family wise, like with my dad, right. um, you know, so, and, and I, and I can say that that part of my life was kind of hindering my writing. And it, I mean, I, my, my writer's block was like this, like it was right. huge. And um, I, was writing a little bit here and there, but I wasn't really happy with what I was writing. And in old school, to let you know, like I would, I, I, when I would never early on ask him, "How you like this? How you like this? How you like this?" I was so unsure. Uh, right. Coming back to it, of what I was writing, I would uh, often, you know, try to gauge his opinion of what I was writing mm-hmm. because I wasn't happy with it. And and when my when my father passed um, in April, I I don't know. It was just like a weight was lifted right. and, and and everything it started coming back more naturally for me right. um even much so when we were actually done i wanted to keep going because i had filled yeah. my pocket my pocket had got yeah you know what i mean yeah. and um like it had it everything had came back and i didn't want to stop writing i was like let's do some more songs you know old school was like no we're gonna give them these and you know we go <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey that's the that's the a and r talking that's the a and r talking and this is the mc talking like man right, right. i'm writing some i'm writing some shit now right. you know let's do it yeah yeah <laughs> she got a she got a pen game back and it was cool because because, and it was funny because the patience I had with her and even the encouragement I was giving her through her writer's block, it was easy to do that, not just because it was her, but because I had just done the same thing with Kanye. He right. was in the writer's block, right. you know, which is how we ended up in our situation. Me trying to help him get out of a writer's block, I end up giving him one of our mixtapes, thinking that it would inspire him to want to write the way it inspired me when um I you heard it, when, you know. You know, when I heard it again, because I hadn't listened to my our music in a while and I heard it and it made me want to write. So I sent it to him thinking like, you know what, if it's making me want to write, he's a hip hop head too. You know, Kanye, way more hip hop than people know. I said, yeah, he, he he's going to want to write too. But it turned into, you know, this, <laughs> this situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, imagine that. Imagine giving like the biggest, uh, most um, disruptive, uh creative on the planet uh a tool to help him out of a writer's block and it turns into a a full-fledged uh record situation the releasing the project for you you know that that it was just, so it's just hard this thing like it man put it like this if this wasn't us and not to sound narcissistic if it wasn't us i would be so inspired by our story because it's it's virtually it's pretty unbelievable right. you know? yeah it's yeah. pretty unbelievable. I can admit that, like, we're not over here all cool, like, yeah, you know, we just, you know, we abstract mindset. <laughs> no, it's like, no, no, we're just like everybody else who got our album saying, damn, man, this is what had to be incredible. Because we look at it and be like, man, this is wild. Like, you know, mm. how this happened, <laughs> you know? I got I got two quick individual questions for each of y'all on the yeah. back of that. Uh, EP, go back to, to the writer's block and your father. Um, I thought it was really interesting. But I've also noticed that in the younger generation um, that that concept, that sort of weight being lifted off can get twisted to this point where, like, they feel like pain is really necessary to create. Do you do you mm. feel that way um, or do you feel that it was more the obligation to take care of him? That was the weight that was lifted off. So so um, I believe it's both. I think I think the obligation is there because that was my dad. Um, right. And I'm I was my I'm, I'm my dad's oldest child. So um, that obligation was there. But it, it, it wasn't um, it was more of for me, physical um, and it was emotional. I couldn't really focus on anything else that didn't have to do with him, because right. at that time, that was the most important thing on my plate. Um, right. um because at, at that point, guys, like we knew my dad was going to die, like he was dying. 
So, so uh, my job and, um, and my family's job was to make him as comfortable as possible as he made his transition. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I didn't like, like pain is not a good thing. Like, you know, sometimes uh, you can, you can use pain to create um, it. Pain can also be a destructive force. You know what I mean? And yeah. and um and, and it can turn you inside out. But with anything that hurts you, uh, you have to heal first. Right. With, with any so, sort of pain, you have to heal before. Like, I don't I don't think I, I think pain can bring something beautiful to the world, but healing has to take place as well. Right. Like it, it is I don't I don't know uh if pain is what made me start writing. You know, right. I don't think that I think I think the absence of my father's pain is what made me start. Yeah. Writing. So, mm -hmm. you know. I love that. I love that. And then uh, pivoting off of that and, and talking about your experience, uh, Greek, um, how did you learn those A&R muscles? Like, <laughs> how, how do you like that's got to be like one of the most coveted jobs on the planet, especially yeah, at that man. level? Um, yeah. How did how did you come into all that? You know what? Like one of the job, one of the things that like a lot of people think the NR position is so glamorous and they want to and they want to have it simply because it's the, it, the most the oldest definition or the oldest definition associated with it is that's the person who finds the talent for the label. You know what I'm saying? But that's that. Yes, that's that's what the NR does. They find it. They find the talent for the label. But what hasn't been discussed over the years, and that's why it's so bad that the NR position has been kind of like played out of the the game and it's not as it's not as um attached to a, a salary as it used to be and uh you still have a lot of these independent labels who maintain the a and r's and there's several majors who maintain the a and r's but not like it was you know the a and r role what, what i want to say is the a and r role is more than just finding talent is exactly what i was saying you're like a, a the a and r is a conduit between the artists and uh the label the a and r is that person to help, like I say, the artist get in that mood. If you're a really good NR, maybe like I was forced, blessed and fortunate enough to be an artist myself, you can bring something creative to the table. You maybe you may can help with some ideas. You might can help with some hooks, some writing, and you know what I mean. You so for me, I was a full fledged NR because I was able to bring all types of creative uh, ideas and things to the table. So just flexing that muscle for me. Um, it, 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 it's a position where you honestly have to be uh, selfless, you know, and, 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 and have a lot of humble because it's not about you. When you're mm -hmm. playing the a and role, it's, it's definitely not about you. But you have to be just as excited to get the result you would want if it was you. So right. I, I think what happened with me over the years, what I learned, even with Abstract Mind State, I, I, I've always gotten excited to just be a part of something great. So with that, the a and role becomes easy for me because I, I enjoy being a part of something great, whether it was Abstract My State or maybe helping take Kanye from producer, being a part of the team. They helped them go from producer to, to the rapper that everybody knows. Right. You know, I was, I, was, I was a part of some really great moments. You know what I'm saying? And that right. built my a and muscle, just, just the selflessness of that position or playing mm -hmm. those roles you know and just accepting that hey it's not about you but you can get just as much joy out of seeing the results for somebody else you know that is, that's not an easy thing it's a lot of people that just can't deal with seeing the, uh, you There's know what saying, saying. especially, especially yeah. the way especially the, um knowing the way that we end it right you yeah. know like that that's yeah, kind of like unfinished that's, yeah. yeah 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 so yeah. that you see yeah that's true we be like yeah. we end it unfinished so imagine me going behind like somebody as who turned out to be as 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 major as Kanye, or even all of the artists that I was behind after us, and I say behind, I mean really pushing and pulling and stretching and bringing all of my you know all of my tools and codes to the table, man. And I was unfinished, but you know it, again, it was just personality. It was never about ego. It was always about yeah. you know adding to the culture and building. So I was able to to to, to flex my muscle. It was easy for me because I really was in tune like that. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, so I imagine you had to put your A and R hat on for this project. So what I read was, you guys mm -hmm. had access to three hundred Kanye West beats. 
that you had to nail yeah, that yeah, yeah. to 100. <laughs> two, two parts to this question. One, what is it like to have access to 300 Kanye West beats? And then, madness. And then, and then, madness you know, and ma mesmerizing and madness at the same happy, time. Happy times. Happy times. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun. And and, and, and let me let me correct you and give him his credit. Uh when it was 300, Kanye dwindled them down to 100. 100 that he felt was like Action. abstract mind state vibe or worthy, okay. you know, abstract worthy. He felt like these are the 100 out of this 300 that I feel you got, that I feel is you guys. Now I want you guys to find your album in this 100. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because old you school, guys really was sitting right next to him in the boards when he was listening to him and tell yeah. the engineer put that in the file, put that in the yeah. file. And I don't even think I don't even, we didn't even know it was for us at the time. Yeah, man, it was crazy, you know. And he's sitting there with his head down, and he like, let me, you know, uh, next, next track, next track. And I'm just watching him. I was just watching his process as he was picking. Like he was like in a zone. He 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 didn't look up. He had his head down, and he would like play the next one, next one. Put that in the folder. Next, next. Stop. Put that in the folder. Next one. Oh, like that one. Next one. Next one. Next. Until he, you know, when he when it was they, he was through the three hundred. It just happened to be a hundred in the folder, and he looked up and said, "Okay, I want you to get with EP and y'all find y'all album in these." And mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was a hundred to me. EP got together and counted them. We was yeah. like, "Good lord!" Like you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> we was like, "Lord, this is a lot of." It. A lot of beats, a lot of tracks, you know. So, what, what, yeah, what was man. that like to go from being the consultant to being the clients of Kanye West? Mm -hmm. Because now, now you go from being at his side to him now directing and giving you the guidance to complete your project, where you were the person but who was being that consultant and offering your opinion. But now you're on the receiving end. And EP, yeah. what was that like to also be part of that uh, that development? Um. Well, so so for us, we 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 a and R ourselves. Like we 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 bounced off each other so so much, and, and it was so natural. But we never like um, we always was each other's uh, hardest critic. But we were also each other's favorite rappers. So like this project is the only project that he and I have been involved in where we allowed ourselves to be produced. Like right. he, he was fiddling with our rhymes. He was fiddling mm -hmm. with our cadences. He was fiddling with whole verses. Like that shit couldn't have happened 20 years ago. I don't, give yeah. a, I don't care who it was. <laughs> Somebody coming in talking about, you know, EP, listen, if you say this different, I'm like, no, I'm not saying shit different. I'm not changing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, fast forward to, you know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson telling you that shit. You yeah. know, you pretty much you pretty much got somebody that's that's proven telling you, yeah. listen, this is the way you need to do it. Trust me, you know, it, it, you know, so you just do it. And and old school and I had an agreement in the beginning, whatever he asked us to do on this project, since he brought us back to the table, and this is a collaboration, these are his words, a yeah. collaboration between Ye and abstract mind state. We are going to take everything that he says into consideration, and hundred percent of the time, we'll kind of acquiesce and do what he asks us to do, and that's what yeah. we do. And that, and that, yeah. that's what you guys are listening to. And that we've never that it, that would never happen twenty five years ago. 25 yeah, years. yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the results, man. And we've been getting some really good feedback, and I'm sure, like you guys, I mean, for us to even be on here, you guys obviously enjoyed the album. Oh, so, it was fantastic. <laughs> so, so, so what that says is um, the mature us or, you know, um, it worked. Whatever that was, whatever yeah. that thing was, it worked. Our, our obedience to just allow him to kind of, you know, to produce us and not just, you know, make throw beats us for us, beats. But, yeah. but not yeah. throw us beats, but actually produce us as a group. Right. Us being right. obedient enough to just be mature enough to just say, okay, this, you know, this, yeah, it's a friend, but he's a very proven, a very proven um, creative. He's proven. Yeah. He's very proven with accolades and notoriety to boot. So yeah. we just going to fall back and, 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 you know, and allow ourselves to be, um, you know, molded a bit, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, Kanye left 
all of the room for us to be abstract. He didn't yeah. he didn't try to stick a straw in that and suck it all out. You know, he he allowed us to completely 100 percent be abstract. Mind. Because whatever whatever it was, you know, out, you know, God and whatever else touched him to even want to do this with us. Um, it was because he was obviously it's very obvious he was fine. He always been fond of us. Let's just say it straightforward. He always been fond of us. We were one of the groups that he thought was dope. He's been thinking and that and a he long didn't time. Want us to change anything. Like yeah. he didn't want us to change what that feeling, that vibe was right. that yeah. he had back then. So and if you notice the reason people say, man, uh Kanye got back to the, you know, to the to the old him. I, I reread a lot of stuff they saying about him in relations to our project. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. put it like this. I'll say if it was any time for Kanye to do this, get back to the soul samples and all that, it would be for abstract because that was our sound. Right. Like, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> like if it was one time where he can go back and have fun himself making those type of, it was then because I mean, that was our sound. Listen to our old music. That was our sound. Right. So that's why people say, man, y'all fit so well. True, we do because this is a couch or a car. This is a couch we sat on in a car we used to drive. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. This is group, yeah. Uh, I, I want to first say, like uh, Rashid Hadid, who did a bunch of your guys' production on your mixtapes. I just saw him last week. He was over at the Promontory, and uh, he says hi. I reached out to him uh, this afternoon, so uh, he's okay, very show. super excited for you guys. By the way, with your return, so I wanted to pass along that message. Sure. Yeah, man. Hadi gave us the uh, the craziest. Like we, Hadi. People don't know the story of us and Hadi, but the story of us and Hadi at the time that Hadi connected with Abstract Mind State, nobody knew who he was. Mm -hmm. But we thought he was so dope yes. that me and EP said we're gonna use us because we were plugged with everybody. So right. we said we were gonna use us to make sure everybody know you, and we're gonna. And so that's why he produced like two four volume two and three and four and half of one mm -hmm. and and then by, by the time we got to volume three i remember us sitting down and i said look everybody you have to meet all of the the pioneers of this city and the players that me and ep been rocking with from the beginning and i brought everybody through his house mm -hmm. you know if you look at volume three that the celebration and it was supposed to be just a celebration so i brought all of the best of the best and that's when everybody met hadi and nobody you know so that thing was another one of those moments where we had got with a producer where his sound was just moved us so much that yeah. we yeah. ended up just creating what people called then like some masterpieces, you know, some mm -hmm. of the words that we're hearing about what we did with Kanye currently. They like, oh, it's a masterpiece and all that. And we're extremely flattered. But, you know, I think it's just me and EP is addicted to that real soulful. You know, it's a Chicago thing. Y'all know that yeah. it's a Chicago. That yeah. soul is Chicago, yeah. you know. And Definitely. I'm glad you brought that mixtape up because I was actually going to ask you uh, in, in 2021, if you had to pick Chicago's <laughs> hardest working and you can't pick yourself, you can't pick yourself, who are you picking? Give me give me three names. Oh, mm, right now. Right now. Um, and I, I will have to get. OK, I, I'm, I, I, I can. I got it. I have an excuse for each one. I will have to give it up to um, Lil Durk. Cause he's, he's, he's putting in everywhere. Work. Like he's if everywhere. you just want to talk about working, Lil Durk is working. He's, he seems to be unafraid to get in that studio and, 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 and you, and take and seize the moment. It's his what? time. I talked to Lil Durk, Durk personally and uh, he came out to, you know, when you make it to a certain level, Kanye, you know, summons you <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you come to see you. Kanye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, we were, it was in Atlanta, not during this new stuff he's doing, but this was like when he, we were out there in this big, He'll tell you about it. It was this big like hanger Kanye had, and everybody was coming through. And I said, Dirk, man, it's your time, bro. I was like, you know, congratulations. I said, but man, don't like do your thing. You know, he was listening to me too. But Dirk, anyway, Dirk is one because he's putting in that work. He's he's taking advantage of the moment. Um, I'm I still got to back go back and say Chance the rapper simply because Chance was is the modern day abstract mind state we did everything oh. independent right. am i you know like no can't nobody challenge us on that we did it yeah. all independent yeah. so the way chance took independency he he used because he was of the generation that had all this technology he was able to take that ground level independency mix it with technology and he just pulled off amazing things like the things he did with the grammys yeah. you know how do you get recognized by an association 
that only deals with sales or or no he don't he wasn't even attached to that but he made them recognize him you know because right. of how hard he was going into so chance the rapper you know without a doubt you know and then um the third the third one i would say would be uh and you know it's my opinion and so i would say dirk chance the rapper and uh who 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 uh who else who dope uh it's messy i will Oh, Vic Mensa. There we go. Like Damn. Vic Mensa. You said it. Vic Mensa is Vic Mensa is Chicago's black thought. Ooh. He's a he's he's we'll kill he's, a, we'll kill he's a young he's a young black thought. And here's here's the here's the cool part. He came from a young roots. Kids oh. these days what kids these days when Chicago right. is young with roots. roots. Yep. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. So if you take you it back, right. he started with kids these days and they were like together, they was like the roots. And then he broke off like Black Thought, you know, at one time broke off. And Vic Mensa, and when I say Black Thought, it's just his skill level, his rhyme, his level, his level of rhyming is gives you those black thought head in your hands moments, like, oh Lord, do you hit his, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and Big Mensa reached out to me. He he connected with me on IG. I didn't even know he even he connected and was showing me love, you know, and you know, saying a few things on my post. And I'm like, I, I had to call my man Extreme and say, man, did you put Vic on us or something? He was like, nah, man. So so that just shows me that Vic is is is, is know what's up too, you know. He, <laughs> you know, I mean, so shout shout out to him because he's. He's an hey, MC. Hey, MC. if we ever get Vic on the show, I'm gonna ask him who Chicago's <laughs> hardest working is. And if you don't say <laughs> abstract minds, he better say abstract minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, we earned that title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's who that's who I would say. You know, or we would say. You know, are those three for those specific reasons? You know, right. you know, yeah. EP, did you have a three that you wanted to just toss out? Like who, who's really like he got two of them. He, he got two of them. Chance and, and Vic Mensa. Um, but that's that's a that's, that's about it for me. <laughs> like I. <don't. laughs> um, we we wanted to to, to to circle back to your early humble beginnings, and in the uh, you guys being um, classmates at Jackson State. And growing up in the '90s uh, era of hip hop, when Chicago obviously had some very pinnacle artists that were coming through and who were making a lot of noise, you had your Commons, your Twisters, your Crucial Conflicts, um, your, your Psychodramas, the West Side. You know, EP will appreciate that. Uh, and so, but you know, it, what we weren't like, but we weren't like ringing bells the, the way that it happened in, after the 2000s. And there was a, a huge underground scene that was occurring. You know, like the Mormon Records, um, yeah. Natural, Galapagos 4. There was all yeah. these underground uh, labels throughout the city that were pumping out music. To take us back to that time frame, because we could see the early videos of you guys rocking and the crowds are into it. What well, what was that vibe like? To take us into like sort of that 90s Chicago era, but before everything. Chicago's golden era. God. Chicago's golden era. Chicago's yes. golden era. Yes. Like just to just to think about everybody like in one room like that, just all of those yeah. different all of those different sounds, but everybody individually dope. You know what I mean? And everybody loving everybody. Like yeah. our shows, everybody used to come to our shows. Like yeah. we'll, we'll look up, Crucial will be there, Common will yeah. be there, you know, yeah. Tusk will be there, Psychodrama yeah. will be there, Soldiers at War. Yeah. Like it, it did not matter. <laughs> and, and 13, like we brought the people you know the people people came to yeah, yeah. It, it was like we go, where you going we going to see my state like we <laughs> we were gonna go see abstract you know so right. when we would look out into the crowd like while we was rocking and the people that we would see those are people that we listened to right yeah yeah which, which was that we had great. high high respect for you know yeah. yes yeah. so it was dope to be rocking not only the supporters who were there just to see the abstract mind state show that we was known to give but to see our peers like she was naming a lot of them the ash 13s and the cap d's and all that because yeah. we would go to cap cap d's we would go to all natural show too and the family tree and all them you know right. all of them you know rock stars like mr Greenweeds. you know what i mean it, yeah. is, it just yeah. was it was crazy to see that and experience that and i 
uh, the only thing I, uh, it's a shame, but I like we, we just talked about Chance and Vic Mensa and Lil Dirt. They, they weren't there for that. And it would have been, mm -hmm. it, it's like, I wish I could show them, you know, that, that the, cause Chicago did have a golden era yeah. and, that, yeah. and yeah. we were a part of that. You know what I mean? So it was wonderful, man. Cause it was a time of uh, extreme creativity. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, you Quelo, you just had everybody right. doing it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, it was, it was so fun, you know, and, 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 and me and EP, we tried to pack everybody we thought was dope yeah you know yeah on 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 our mixtapes uh we gonna feature them or something because you know what i mean that was just our way of saying hey man you know we just think y'all cold so come on man. jump on this respect yeah. that was our yeah, way respect, of respect. Mm -hmm. yeah that was our salute you know we was respect so the golden era was just a euphoric you know feeling without you know without any uh, mind altering drugs. It just uh, oh, it was yeah. a serious, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? It was just a serious high during Chicago's golden era. Cause, yeah. and you yeah. had to bring it, you had to bring it, yeah. you know, cats, the yeah. cats like dirty MF and all of them who would just mm. be like mm. and juice who would just be mm. freestyle destroy, maniacs. You know destroy, what I mean? Destroying life for MCs. Oh man. All like <laughs> cats. Oh, come on, man. Like, um, you know, Imagine walking in a in a dank dark nightclub and that juice is with a mic in his <laughs> hand, like going off the dome for 15 minutes straight. I'm and, talking and, about and, I'm talking about the whole, perfect when everybody sweating, it's hot, all you smell is being and squares, being oh, squares in the whole place, but but it's Ju on the stage and you losing it because he bought. Yeah, man. <laughs> These guys, the, you know, some some considered us. I mean, the Wonder Twins. We we jokingly call ourselves superheroes because we, you know, our one of our monikers is the Wonder Twins. But those guys were like the superheroes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. They were yeah. our superheroes. You know. Yeah. So it was it was a great time. The Golden Era of Chicago was a great time. It was. It was. Yeah. I got uh, I got one quick fire question and one a little and one is my last question here. Uh, before we close out in a, in a little bit, but uh, I heard y'all met over drinks on the Amtrak train home, uh, and I read in the interview that y'all was drinking bad gin, and you would oh. never touch that stuff today. Oh man! So my Please. question is simple: uh, What is the drink of choice? You guys, you guys had the album; it's doing great. You know, uh, is it is it champagne? Is it, what, what's going oh, on? Everybody knows nowadays. I'm a whiskey sipper, man. You yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah. EP know it's all about, you know, the whiskey for me, you know, Jack yeah. Daniels being my favorite, but I have a nice selection of whiskeys in the cat, you know, EP know the, the bar. I, I, I've in my, in my older age kind of gravitated more towards the tequila. Uh, yeah. I like it. Hey. I like it a hey. lot. I like it. <laughs> but, but my rap partner, man, he, he got a nuke on the mules. Like he, when I go to LA, I gotta have, he gotta fix me a mule. Like, like specifically, yes, specifically yes, 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 Kentucky mules, but yeah, not, yeah, not that's in Moscow, that's Kentucky true. mules. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's specifically. Right. That's right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's great. And then my last question of the night. Um, I know there's more coming from y'all, and I think that's awesome. Do y'all feel cleansed of like the pressure of releasing new music now? This was no yeah. pressure. Yeah, it no was pressure. no pressure. No pressure. This is this was um so not even surprisingly it's it's it was pressure back then right yeah um because yeah. that was our end all be all like right. we wanted to make money off of rap we loved doing yeah. it it was the art yeah. it was for the love but we thought we were good enough to also live off of doing yeah. it right? Right. Yeah. right now we live off of what we do professionally and it mm -hmm. this right. album doesn't make or break us you know, yeah. so I think that yeah. the comfort level of writing and being in the studio without that pressure um, produced the diamond. Yeah. Yeah. Because 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 we um, were a group that um, didn't have all of the, the, the uh, financial backing. Our records were highly produced. Right. But that was because of the quality of people that we dealt with and the quality right. places we recorded. Yes. We didn't have the. Our, our 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 output was way more quality than what we actually could pay for. Mm -hmm. It was all right, about right. relationships. Relationships got a lot of high quality things done for us. So this time around, like EP, I'll piggyback off her. It was no pressure simply because 
this was the first time we wasn't on the clock. Like we were in Kanye's studios, right. you know, wherever, wherever we, wherever, with his engineers, we had as much time. This was the first time, and we heard, we only heard about being able to write in the studio. Yeah. That used to sound like such a luxury to us because we're like, <laughs> man, write in the studio. You know, that was that. that they, these cats, is, these yeah. cats. Is, Spoiled. We like these some spoiled babies. Like yeah. what they mean they wrote in the studio. Like we had to memorize yeah. the rhymes and utilize that and watch that clock and kill it in, yep. a, in a short yep. amount of time and get yep. out of there because you know we couldn't pay for anything else. Yep. But this time, man, we ordering food. We uh, <laughs> you know, we, we chilling. We, no, chillin'. we, we chilling. Like we could walk around. We would take a break. We can talk to each other for a minute. You know, we, uh, we 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 was out in Wyoming. We were at Big Hole, Big Hole Barbecue. Yeah, I'm telling you, we man. get those smoked those smoked wings from Big Hole. Man, them ribs, and, and, man, them ribs. <laughs> and we'd chill out and then get back to it. So yep. it was yep. very, very, like, very. Years comfortable. ago, we would crack the whip on each other. Like, oh like, yeah, like, <laughs> man, it, it was it was yeah. crazy, but we had to do that. So yeah. it, it, it's it's now now that you bring that up, old school. It's like. Shit looked so shiny, but it was a grind. <laughs> like what, what yeah. people saw and what people heard was so yeah. polished. But I'm talking about behind the scenes, it was tears. It was, it was yeah, it was crazy. It and was Gabe, crazy. You know, you know our whole music, Gabe. That stuff looks so good and sounds so good. And I mean, in terms of quality. But man, yeah. we was you were so. We were yeah, struggling. we were struggling. Like it was crazy trying to get that stuff done, but yeah. it always looked and sound good, yeah. though. You know, no, but Mr. yeah, Mr. now, Mr. now when you say it look and sound good, it actually we actually was like comfortable. You yeah. know, yeah. So and, and Ye created that environment for us. That was one of the things in the beginning of him saying, "Look, this is going to be a collaboration between Abstract and Kanye." He said to us, "You you're going to record the album in my studio." You're gonna, you know, you're not gonna have to worry about this and that. You're not right. gonna have to worry about studio time. You know, you know what I mean? Even yeah. you know, travel and all of that stuff wasn't everything was taken care of. So, you know, shout out, shout out to the homie man for really, shout really doing what boy. he said he was gonna do, you know. Yeah, to the what up, to the we're uh, <laughs> we're a little bit over time, so thank you guys for letting us have this time with you. Okay. Two questions and then right. we got there. EP, what was it like? Did do you like take PTO to go record an album? Or, like you're flying in the white room? <laughs> well, well, right now, secret, secret, because I probably some of my people listening to this, but you know, right, right now, right now, I'm not taking any time off because uh, I'm an independent contractor. I don't like I make my own schedule. Okay, and like I'm still able to attend just like we're doing this now. I'm able to attend meetings and I'll be in LA. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll be in Wyoming, you know, but <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, they don't know. <laughs> John B up in this thing. <laughs> you know? All right, sounds good. And then uh my last question is uh greg i met i read that when you first ran into kanye and he was like why aren't you guys working with me <laughs> and you said you're you're too expensive for us my question yeah. did you ever think about during that 6 a.m call when he's like i want to bring back abstract mind state and did you ever think about saying but can you afford us <laughs> <laughs> uh, hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Hilarious. Just a thought. No, I look, that didn't that didn't come across my mind. Because no. <laughs> no. honest, Gabe, to be honest, whatever number I said, he actually probably could he would have been able to afford it. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> he could have afforded us. Whatever number I said, yeah. he would have been yeah. able to afford yeah. it. Pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> that would have been a great moment. M missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much, uh, Old School Ice Cream and EP the Hellcat, yes. Abstract Mind State. Uh, the we didn't even uh, salute you as being the only male female duo in hip hop Ooh. right now. Uh, I I'm hard pressed Ooh. to think of anyone else. I'm sure there's a group somewhere in America that can also claim this, but we don't know who you are. So we're going <laughs> to give it to Abstract Mind State tonight. <laughs> so please don't don't flood my messages saying that there's a group. 
somewhere in South Dakota that's doing it. That's fantastic. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause but they, they didn't look, they didn't cross, they didn't cross that threshold to put, I'm telling you, know, you where, where, where were you 20 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Dreams still inspire on the newly formed Yeezy Sounds label. It's out on all digital streaming platforms. Yes, Go yes. present to your life, bring that soul back, and trust me, you'll be a better person for it. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Wow, thank you guys for having us. My Wonder mistake. Twins. Thank y'all. Yes, thank y'all so much. Yes. All right. Yes. Good evening. Thank you. Peace. Right. Peace. What a fan. Oh. I, I I closed Sam out. <laughs> I'm saying, like, one of my top liver. I'm gone. I'm gone. Thank you again. Thank you again. I'm sorry you had to learn this way. That yeah, uh, Ethan Hawke is my new producer and co-host. My bad. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank uh, like I said before the show started, six degrees of separation goes. This might be the closest uh, we will ever get to having Kanye himself on the show. And uh, and just awesome. I, I mean, to hear about the golden era of Chicago hip hop, um, to hear about, you know, the entire journey, the entire process. Um, what, a, what a time. What a time. So uh, thank you for them for coming through because uh, they're a hot topic right now. Absolutely. The, the the record is a phenomenal listen. It's really enjoyable. It, it has that, like you said, that adult feel to it without seeming preachy or old or dated. They're, they're very much still in tune, still have their skill set, and they put together a fantastic listening experience. And from the uh, from some of the research we did, they still have a bunch of records that they could put out another album. So, well, maybe we didn't get a chance to ask him about that, but let's celebrate. They, they got 100 beats. Let me hold one. <laughs> Can we just use one for a bed? Let me, I mean, yeah, just let me. Yeah, just let's play it before the show. We'll play the same beat every time. <laughs> we'll be the only podcast produced by Kanye West. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Exactly. All right, that's gonna be our show tonight. We got a great show coming up on uh, Thursday night. Can you do you want to preview that for us, Sam? Yeah, we got uh, we got Boo Man, Boo Man Forever uh, joining us. Uh, one of the most fantastic live performers I think I've ever seen in the city of Chicago. Uh, he, I saw him for the first time live at a Heavy Crown show at Promontory, uh, and it's great. He's got a lot of really great records to talk about, so we're going to talk a little bit about his career. And we got a comedian, Gabe. Friday Funnies are back. Thursday Thunnies are back. <laughs> That's right. Rob Mayfield or Rob, uh, Rob uh, Make the World Laugh, he's going to be joining us. So please, if you're into just some, uh, just having a little bit of fun, uh, talking a little bit about pop culture and poking fun at some things. Rob is going to be with us on Thursday night on the second half of the show to join us. But tune in at 8 o'clock and get the whole experience. So you'll be a better person for it. Yes. All right. So that's going to be our time. Everyone be safe out there. And I say that with the utmost sincerity. I know it's a throwaway thing to say, but please be safe out there wherever you're at in America because uh, it's dangerous out there. Yes. Sam, please uh, take care of yourself. We'll talk hold on, hold on, Gabe. What they got to do, though? You got to share, support, and show love. Okay, okay. That's oh, cool. You can sign off. I don't even care anymore. Just cut the, the three, whole show. The three actors. <laughs> Trust me. Follow that. Also, follow us on the social medias at Weekend Gabe, at Weekend at Gabe's, and also at The Real Sam Crane. Put us all into your timeline because your social media experience will go up by 23.5%. Because why, Sam? That's science, America. That's there you science. Go. Just good science. Follow the science and follow us. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. We'll do it again on Thursday right here on Weekend at Gabe's. We're out. Peace. Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe. Thanks for checking out this latest episode of Weekend at Gabe's. Click on any of the links swirling around my head and also hit the subscribe button while you're here. Thanks for checking out us here on YouTube.